Okay, good morning everyone and welcome to our Take Over the World session. Mark is in Cape Town this weekend for business development meeting, so I'll be leading the meeting this morning. Our Take Over the World session, if you're joining us for the first time this morning, is our team was, um, was created and started over lockdown, so we had to create a way to get together and learn from each other as we couldn't do so over coffee and over at the water station in the office, so... We decided to start our Take Over the World sessions um, every Friday where we could learn from each other and you can come and present anything from a new skill that you've learned up to a life hack, up to a good movie that you've seen. Um, so it's really anything that's inspired you and made your life better that you can come and share to make everyone else's life better. A cool thing that Mark has started over the past few weeks is just a Feel Good Friday song. This week I decided to share Queen's Don't Stop Me Now. A fun fact about this song is that it didn't really, um, it didn't perform as well when it just came out. It actually got better over time up to where it's now one of Spotify's most played songs and Queen's second most played song on Spotify. So if you feel like you're not performing as you should at the moment, don't let anyone stop you now. It might get better with time. Just some cool things that has happened this week. Emma has been published in Topco Media for seven high impact ways to reimagine your BBBEE spend. Well done on that, Emma. And then we also like to celebrate the successes of our team. And Ntukozo Kumalu is part of the Impilo Foundation. And they have also, they have collected 6,000 bras over December that they are starting to distribute every Friday to girls in vulnerable communities. Another thing that has happened, just want to stop sharing my screen quickly. Um, another thing that has happened is that um, Blossom has opened a new micro franchise in Springs over the week, so that is also really cool. But I think you've heard enough from me now, so I'll give over to the ladies who will be presenting today, Jess and Michelle, who will be going first. I'm happy to go first. Great stuff. Then you're up. Can you share your screen, Jess? Um, no, I can't just yet. Okay. Playing host disabled. Let me... There you go. You should be able to share it now. Yeah. Amazing. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Before I share, um, I just wanted to speak a little bit on this topic and what it means to me. So this topic is something I feel very strong about as I do it every day and every time I meet someone new. So today I'm going to be talking about... The three techniques to reading people. Reading people, reading people and their body language is an important way to get to know someone and their intentions. This presentation is going to be interactive, so get ready to answer some questions. These are the three points I'll be talking about today. The first technique is to observe body language cues. Question one goes to Anne. Anne, what is the first thing you notice when meeting someone new? I actually notice their, um, first of all, eye, lang uh, eye language, sorry, their eye contact, <laughs> and also what they do with their hands, like whether they close themselves off or whether they like quite open and like... Yeah verbal with their hands like they move their hands a lot yes so actually according to psychology today words count for only seven percent of how we communicate whereas our body language is 55 percent and voice tone represents the rest the ways in which you can observe body language is through appearance posture physical moments and facial expressions this is all physical and the way someone presents themselves 
It shows how they want to be perceived. The physical moments you have to look out for are leaning and distance, crossed arms and legs, hiding one's hand, lip biting and cuticle picking. And then there are facial expressions. This is a great way to see emotion and read how someone is feeling without them saying so. The second technique is to listen to your intuition. The second question goes to Sam. Sam, have you ever experienced a gut feeling that was right? Definitely. Can you elaborate on that? Um, I, I don't have like a right now example. example. Actually, no, like, like when you, you in the shop and you just see someone walk in and you like have a weird feeling about them and then <laughs> yeah. you like leave the shop. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I got you. So intuition is what your gut feels, not what your head says. Intuition allows you to see far beyond the surface level. The intuitive cues are gut feelings and goosebumps. Your gut is usually never wrong. When meeting someone, you instantly get a feeling about them. This could be positive or negative and could tell you a lot about the energy that, pers that person emits. Lastly, the third technique is sense emotional energy. This question goes to Paula. Paula, have you ever met someone and connected with them instantly due to the energy they emit? Sure, that's not an easy one to answer. Um, I, I think so. Um, I mean, I, well, I've got Lizelle in the car with me and uh, we actually met on a writing retreat, oh, probably 10 years ago. and we become firm friends and we didn't know each other from a bar or so. And we just ended up driving together on, you know, to the retreat just because we happened to live near each other. And yeah. it was like an instant connection. And 10 years later, I'm still in a car with her. So clearly, <laughs> <laughs> clearly the energy um, is synchronized without at, um, any effort. Yeah. It's those friendships that you never think that would, or that just pop up randomly that you wouldn't expect that's really cool so the following points touch on how to read emotional energy emotional emotions are an incredible way to read someone in that when you meet them you could either feel lighter or heavier and this showcases whether they're good to be around or not four strategies to read emotional energy number one notice the feel of a handshake hug and touch emotions are emitted through physical touch when someone connects with you via a hug or handshake, does it make you feel warm or guarded? Second, sense people's presence. This is the entire energy we showcase one another. When meeting people, ask yourself, do they have a friendly vibe about them or are they getting bad vibes that make you want to back off? Third, watch people's eyes. Eyes transmit so much energy and you can learn so much about someone by their eye contact or lack thereof. And lastly, Listen for voice tone and laugh. This can tell you a lot about someone's emotions. Take note of how someone's tone of voice affects you. Does it make you feel safe and comfortable or stiff and uncomfortable? The last question goes to Tukozo. Tukozo, do you find yourself doing either of these four and when? Jess, I don't think she's on the call this morning. I don't see her there, so... Okay, I will move this question to Jonathan. Is Jonathan on here? I am. I, I noticed this with some of my um, friends when I'm meeting their other friends or I'm meeting new people that come into the friend group. I notice a lot of this um, emotion with them and um, connections. Okay. And do you do like do you or do you find yourself doing all four of these points? Uh, definitely, yes. Okay. Cool. 
So I would like to just end off um, by people aren't too complex. There are many ways we can figure someone out to work with them in a better way or figure out how they operate. I hope you are able to take these tips and implement them into your daily life when meeting people in business and the social world alike. Thank you. Well done, Jess. That was, that was really a cool presentation. And um, I think something that has become quite difficult is like the handshakes and the hugs and that physical feeling during COVID. I'm very glad that we can get that back. Is there any thoughts, comments, input into Jess's presentation this morning? Yeah, Jess, thank you so much for sharing. Um, especially as a team, we always want to come across as more friendly and more approachable and I think yeah those few few tips that you shared in the beginning about body language and how your body language can say a lot about you or 55 percent um about you know your commitment to the conversation so yeah team let's let's have some good body language yeah I think what's also really cool is um they say that your gut is like your second brain and that you should you should be mindful, first of all, as to what you put into your gut, just as to what you put into your thoughts and into your brain. Um, and like when your gut starts acting up funnily, like you need to identify what it is that makes it act funny because sometimes it is an emotional thing and not just a physical thing. So, yeah, that's also, that was quite cool. Thanks. I think also like first impressions are always, um, or are always a biggie. So I think... Um, putting that puff chest up you know and being confident um says a lot um and also it will show someone you know that you confident in yourself and you know so i think yeah. that's also really cool to have first impressions are always important <laughs> that's true thanks so much jess next up this morning we have michelle michelle are you ready to share your presentation with us hi yeah i'm ready so I am going to be presenting for my phone or I sent you an email, Anne, can you rather share my presentation because I don't have electricity so now my, my device is acting up and I can't seem to share this one on the phone. That is not a problem. Just give me a moment because I close all my tabs while I'm on something like Zoom. So I have it. Just give me a moment to quickly download it. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, and then, and then you just, Michelle, have to make an A host. I will. Okay. Don't worry about that. And also then, please just tell me whether you can see my screen or not. I made a very big Zoom boo-boo this morning. It's Zoom 101 to ask someone, can you see my screen? And I didn't do that this morning. So I actually had pictures of all our cool things that happened this week. But yeah, you couldn't see it. But I'm glad that you could still follow my traits and understand what I was saying. Okay. Shay, can you see my screen? Yes, I can. Thank you. Great stuff. Then you're ready to go, Michelle. All right. Okay, so um, good morning once again. Um, my name is Michelle. And today uh, I'm going to be talking about the healing power of plants in our gardens, um, understanding herbs and their use. So what is a herb? A herb is any plant with leaves, seeds, or flowers used for flavoring, food, medicine, or perfume. A herb is a plant or part of a plant valued for its medicinal, spicy, or aromatic qualities. Did you know uh, that Hippocrates, um, who was alive uh, in 40, I mean 461 to 371 BC, is considered to be the father of natural medicine. The Hippocrates school treated diseases with diet, fasting, herbs, hydrotherapy, exercise, spinal manipulation, uh, spinal manipulation prescribed from the basis of the principles of healing that are now used as the foundation of neurotherapy, uh, which is a form of healthcare that combines modern treatment with traditional methods. Uh, so this just goes to show 
how much uh, herbs have been in use, how much how much we have used herbs as our uh, sources of, of medicinal uh, treatment. So herbs have been in use from, as, from early times until the 19th mid, uh, until the mid 19th century AD when drugs were first introduced into use by the Europeans. So basically the, 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 the pills that we drink now, they stem from um, herbs that were used in the past. You know that in order for us to, to like manufacture pills, we, that we combine a certain number of herbs or, or plants or, you know, to, to come up with the drugs. So the drugs that we, we're taking now for our pain, for our finger and stuff, those drugs come from the, the principles of, 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 of the herbs that the Hi Hippocrates schools used. Uh, next. Sorry, Michelle. Okay. Uh, I lost your screen. I don't know what happened. Um, Can everyone okay, else can... see the screen? Yes, I can see it. I can. Okay. Yes. Uh, this is strange. I can't see. I don't know what I clicked. Okay, it's on fine. On your phone, mm -hmm. swap, swap left and right, left or right, Michelle, on your phone. Um, because it might be that you've moved your screen to the right and then you you where the people are as opposed to where the screen is. Okay. Uh, still can't find it, but that's okay. I'm gonna carry on with the with the with the presentation from the other screen. So um identifying herbs. Proper and correct uh, when you're identifying herbs, it is very important that uh, herbs are properly and correctly identified. As a rule, do not use any herb that you're not sure of. Um, for instance, like for, for me, mint leaves and bay leaves, they just look the same, but then they serve different purposes. So it's always uh, very wise that if if you wanna if if you're using, if you're going to be using herbs, you, you always have um, a herbal book that have that has colored images so that you can be able to see which herb you are dealing with. Um, next slide. Next slide is about, the next slide is about gathering and st storing of, of herbs. For some reason, this is just gone blank. Um, please just give me a second. Uh, Uh, can I just quickly exit this meeting and come back? Because I, I seem to have lost control of my screen. I don't know what's that going is, on. That is fine. Can I maybe mm -hmm. help you, Michelle, and then you can elaborate on it? So we are at gathering and storing of herbs. Um, and you said that herbs are not to be gathered in cold and damp seasons. Yes, they are not to be gathered in cold and damp seasons because now... Um, can you just carry on with the, with the with the with the presentation while I try to? Yes. So when harvested in cold seasons, keep free from for, forming mold. Tender leafy herbs and flowers should be dried under a shed. Hard woody twigs, bucks, and roots can be dried on direct sunlight. When drying, keep herbs free from dust and allow free circulation of air. Store in glass containers labeled with the name and the date of bottling. Containers are to be free of slight moisture. Store dried herbs for two years at most. Then we are looking at classifying herbs. Herbs are classified and grouped according to the effects they have upon the body systems. The classification and grouping of herbs lead us to identify as many herbs as possible that, that, that can treat the same disease. Herbs in the same class or group can be blended or mixed to increase their effectiveness against the disease. Then there's different classes of herbs. There's alternatives 
antibiotics and stimulants. Uh, okay, Anne, I'm back. Thank you so Correct. much. I'm back and I see the screen now. Okay, so I've see, I see you've covered the methods, uh, I mean, the gathering and storage of herbs. Um, and you've also um, covered the classification, okay, classifying herbs and the classes of herbs. So there are like many classes of herbs, uh, but I've only chosen to focus on, on three which I think are, uh, you know, the most interesting. Um, so we've got alternatives. Uh, alternatives are blood purifiers and they're used to treat conditions arising from toxicity. They improve the condition of the blood, accelerate uh, elimination, Im improve digestion and increase appetite. And um, these herbs, this is actually a combination of, of, of herbs, uh, plants, um, vegetables and fruits. So we've got the bearberry, the blue flag, the burdock, the, the frigot, the, uh, the, picky cat, the picky ash, the picky ash, I mean to say, we've got a, a whole bunch of them. And what they do is they work to, to they function to purify your blood, you know. Um, and then can we move on to the next? <laughs> we've got the antibi antibiotics, right? Um, what I've noticed is that a lot of us just run to the pharmacy when we, when we 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 um, we have uh, infections and 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 stuff like that that we usually uh, use antibiotics to treat with. So instead of instead of always going to the pharmacy, what you could do is actually use onion. You know, onion is your everyday um, vegetable that you use on on your on your stew, on your salads and stuff. You can use that 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 very same onion to, to treat this, the very same thing that you would have gone to the pharmacy to get antibi antibiotics for. So uh, antibiotics are herbs that inhibit the growth or kill bacteria, uh, fungus, and some viruses. And um, these include your everyday um, fruits and veg, like your garlic and your onion. Uh, next. And then we've got the stimulant. Um, the stimulants excite and arouse nervous sensibility and stimulate uh, vital forces to action. They increase and strengthen the pulse and restore weakened circulation. So um, these include the, the cayenne paper, the ginger, um, hard reddish, snake root, pickly ash, uh, uh, poplar, and um, wintergreen. You know, other people. I mean, I mean, some people have got this this thing of just fainting because of poor blood circulation. So these uh, stimulants would really help. Uh, then we've got methods of preparation. The method of, of preparation, uh, the method of preparing the herb will depend on the part of the herb used to me uh, and the manner in which it is to be applied. We've got a lot of methods, but my main focus today is juicing and powdering. Next slide. With juicing, herbal juices may be obtained from plants, vegetables, or fruits. Juices contain all uh, undegraded components, especially vitamins. Plants that should only be used when dry should never be consumed as juice. To make juice from plants, uh, you you would need to mash or you know use a um, use a, a juicing machine, and you need to make sure that. Uh, you, you, you juice these plants as soon as they are picked. It's, it's very, um, it's, it's the healthy option. It's very safe actually to, to do that. Once the, the, the plants have been picked and you wanna make juice from them, make it as soon as possible. Do not leave out to dry or leave in, you know, to, to, uh, for, for some days. And to consume the juices, you would probably need to take it in small teaspoon dosages or dilute in water uh, because they may be strong for, for your stomach. And then another method of um, of, of storing um, is powdering. Uh, medicinal medicinal powers may be obtained from plant from plant leaves, uh, clusters, bark, uh, dried fruit, and roots. Powders provide maximum advantages. I mean, advantage of active components of the plant, especially from the hard parts, such as roots. Powders allow more exact dosage, especially when using potentially toxic plants, which must be used in very small amount. Um, 
and the plant part to be used must be dried longer than usual, uh, then finely uh, ground. So it's very important that when you're going to like powder a plant, when you're going to, to turn it into powder, you make sure that it is dry because if it is, if it is, if it is, if it is not dry, it actually becomes uh, a health hazard to you to, 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 to like grind a, a moist plant and consume it. So always make sure that your plants are like really, really dry. And then application of herbs, uh, there are two main methods that I know of. Uh, firstly, we've got the constitutional application and the local application. So the constitutional application, uh, it's, it's, it's like when you're, like your syrups, your teas, you know, your juices, when you have to consume the herb for it to work, uh, this would work in, in, in terms of, uh, um, you know, like blood purifications, you know, I mean, blood purifiers, or like when you've got some internal pain, like maybe you've got uh, um, a headache or something just inside of your body is painful. So then you would need to, uh, to, to, to take the herbs in the, in the, constitutional application. And then there are times, this one is actually the one that I favor most, like when you've got maybe like uh, a, a tummy, uh, a, stom a stomach ache or a headache, instead of having to consume pills or taking juice, you can just um, locally apply, as in like uh, apply the herb on your skin. Um, you, you, you would have to maybe turn it into paste or something and then just apply to wherever you, you, you feel the pain. This usually works when you've got like wounds or cuts or whatever, or you've got like eczema or you've got uh, all those skin related problems. Um, uh, yeah. So now <laughs> the reason I decided to give this presentation on the healing plants, uh, on, I mean, on the power of, of healing plants in our gardens is because, you know, I, I've noticed how personally I am very dependent on pills for anything. The second I'm stressed, I ask my grandmother for stress pills. When I'm writing exams, I want pills. When I've got a, a headache, I want pills. So it's like pills, 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 everything. And I know that this is dangerous. I know that it's unhealthy for me. Pills themselves have put, it mean, uh, have put me in the hospital, but I still take them anyways. And, you know, regardless of whether or not they they are uh, they like they pose as a health hazard for me. So the main reason I decided to 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 give this presentation was to say you know to share with with you guys that you know um instead of always taking the pills you can opt for for for, for plants. They are safer. They are healthier. They are not as uh, they're not addictive as drugs are. They're not expensive as, as drugs are because you can actually, you know, have these in your garden. So when you have got a headache, you just go to the back of your garden and, um, you know, take a wormwood or something, make tea out of it and you should be fine in 15 minutes, you know. Um, so I just wanted to share this with you um, to say we, we can, we can, we can, there are other ways of, of our, of healing our pain. So uh, my slogan is uh, that bag means nothing if you if you ain't got your health in it. So as, as much as we're busy chasing the bag, you also need to make sure that we maintain the health as well. Because if you just got the bag without the health, then you, you're nothing. It means nothing. Thank you. Oh, wow. Thank you so much, Michelle. I think this is very valuable information, especially in the times that we're in. Anyone else have some comments, input, feedback for Michelle? Yeah, I, I just want to say, uh, Michelle, well done for having comprehensive slides because it just goes to show what happens when you have to throw the ball to an A to present uh, for, for part of it. So well done, an A, for, for your um, picking up uh, in between. Um, but it was really informative, so well researched. Um, I, I think I'm going to have to go back and listen again to make sure that I, I caught everything in between. Uh, there's some nice little lessons embedded in inside there. So well done, Michelle. Thank you. I'm I'm willing to share the presentation itself in case I missed a few points myself. Great stuff. Thank you for that, Michelle. I think that would be really useful as well. Then we can share the presentation internally with the team. I think. There's so many like natural remedies that we forget about. 
um, like especially like garlic and onion and things that we can put in like we can incorporate into our daily use that we just sometimes don't um, and we actually lose out on the benefit of it um, yeah so I think that is that from my side anyone else have a comment I think they're researching how they can stay healthy in healthier terms Michelle so thank you so much for that with that I think that is our presentation for this morning I hope you guys have a lovely Friday thank you so much for joining us for our external attendees that joined this morning as well thank you so much for joining us every week there will be a playback facility made available so you can listen to this again in your own time and I hope you guys have a lovely day happy Friday guys Thanks, Anne. Happy Friday, everyone. Happy Friday, Thank, you. Thank you.